thing to remember is that at the end of the day, digital technology is it's just a tool. And like any tool, it depends how you use it. You can think of it as, the way in my head, we think of it as escalator, where it can really have potential to uplift people um, in terms of their economic prosperity, in terms of livelihoods, if you know how to use it, if you have access to it. Um, but of course, there's also the other side where if you don't have access to it, or you don't know how to use it, then you can be left out. I think what we have seen during the pandemic is there's acceleration in adoption, acceleration in learning how to use different technologies. And the space that we see in particular is around e-commerce. And I'm very glad that you know, Mr. Plate has mentioned in particular the importance of the micro and medium scale, um, small and medium scale enterprises and entrepreneurs. Because I think that's a space where I have seen a very rapid transformation. Um, I think two key words that we see the way kind of digital technologies empower entrepreneurs. One is around diversification. And this is more important ever during the pandemic because typically in the past, the small medium scale enterprises, they tend to focus very much on their immediate markets. They're heavily reliant on having storefronts, having to interact with customers. Of course, none of these are really possible during the pandemic. So having an online presence allow you to diversify yourself from offline to online. And once you get online, they will find that it becomes much easier to scale up. So instead of just selling to uh, immediate province, you can now sell nationwide. And some of them have gone on to even export to other countries in the region. And this is especially crucial in the times where you still have pandemic happening in hot spots here and there, so that you don't put all the eggs in one basket. So diversification is really important for the SMEs. The second um, keyword, which is also beginning with a D, is around discovery. And I think that's, that's really quite an empowerment story where we have seen a lot of new entrepreneurs joining the e-commerce. And these are not business people to begin with. Um, there's a study by the World Bank that we have play a small uh, part in contributing in Indonesia, where we found that 25% um, of the merchants survey actually just started business right after the pandemic using e-commerce. And once you look at a decomposition of that, you find that actually the majority of them are female entrepreneurs. And about three quarters of them use um, e-commerce as a way of a primary income to support the families. So you have seen students who cannot go to school or have to study from home now have extra time, can actually raise money to support their livelihoods, pay for their education. We have seen homemakers who have to take care of responsibility of the households now have flexibility and free time to also run business on the side. So these are some of the stories that we have seen, you know, discovery of the new entrepreneurs, of the new business models, of these kind of resilient entrepreneurs. And I think, I think these two key themes are you know, very prominent, not just in Indonesia, but across through, throughout Southeast Asia. Mm. And it's part of where you know, we think there's a huge promise, but of course there's also a few barriers or a few bridges that we have to build to get there. Mm. Connectivity is one. The other very, very important one is around digital skills. And by, by saying digital skills, it's not just about learning how to use e-commerce. But remember, some of these are never, and they're not business people in the past. So it's also about the soft skills, the, the entrepreneurial skills, a lot of these skills which are important for doing business successfully, but beyond. Mm -hmm. Some of these skills can go on to help them with other things in life. Um, after even if they don't do business anymore. And I think that's where, you know, where the private sector and public sector can really come together to really bridge that gap. Thank you.